<laughs> Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our uh, Cast Iron Cooking Facebook groups, uh, li Facebook Live video chat. Um, for for the record, I just decided to do this really just for the heck of it. I was <clears throat> in a mood to de-stress tonight. Cooking is a great way to do that, and I thought, why not? We'll just throw a Facebook Live and uh, just have some, just have a little fun. And, and uh, especially, but I'd like to uh, see anybody put questions out and uh, answer them. I'll answer them, and as well, anybody else is, of course, free to comment. Comments are encouraged. Um, I guess I should also say anyone, really, on the Cast Iron Cooking Group is really free to do a uh, Facebook Live if they feel like it. Um, there's nothing special about that. It's really pretty much the same as posting the photos and those uh, little phone videos on the group. So we uh, encourage people to uh, have fun and do so. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, well, what do we have here? Well, we have none other than the brand new Lodge Cast Iron pie plate. Um, they just came out with this a couple of uh, weeks ago and yeah I had I succumbed to temptation and I ended up uh, getting one for myself. So I've already uh, baked an apple pie with this and so because of this it's not pristine. It does have a couple of um, yeah it does have a couple of uh, spots in it but so it goes. That's why I'm here really to help uh, beef up the seasoning a little bit. Just for the record if anybody's interested um, other than the seasoning is uh, scorched a little bit for my burner. This is the bottom side of the uh, Lodge cast iron uh, pie plate and it says USA BW, that's bakeware obviously, 9 pie. <laughs> it's a 9 inch pie plate. How clever. Oops, I'm not sure if I, that came up clearly. So that's what it looks like on the bottom. It's actually uh, pretty, th very thin thin and uh, especially for a large pan and it's uh, for a cast iron pan it's not especially heavy but hey it is cast iron and that's why I'm here to um, as I said uh, beef up the seasoning on this uh, also here on this on this side we have another large cast iron pan however this one is something maybe a little less common um, it is a vintage uh, three-notch number six, uh, probably from the uh, 1940s to uh, maybe 1950s, and uh, we can tell that because, of course, it has the three notches in the uh, three o'clock, nine o'clock, and twelve o'clock position, um, and also we can tell because of what it does not have. Um, it does not have the uh, mark SK that Lodge put on all of their skillets starting in sometime in the 1950s and moving forward. So that would mean it's before the 1950s. That's why <clears throat> I think it can be dated from the 1940s because of the three notches to the 1950s. Uh, it has what they call a blob at the top, which was a maker's mark. Uh, workers often had their own little marks that they put on the uh, pans there uh, to identify who made it. My understanding is that uh, helps to identify who made the pans, and so you know they could help. Uh, they could get paid for it. Um, number six is an unusual size for Lodge. Not exactly rare, but they really didn't make uh, too many many of these compared to their more common, say, number eight or number size uh, pans, which is one reason why, why I came across this. You know, it's like one of those things I knew I had to grab <laughs> just because I'm a cast iron nerd like that. Uh, the other interesting thing is that you'll notice it actually has a smooth milled surface. Uh, this was back during the earlier days when Lodge ground, uh, ground down their pans to a near glass uh, smooth surface. So it's actually comparing an older vintage Lodge to a newer Lodge, which also uh, does not have the uh, glass smooth surface. But despite the way some people say, um, you know, that Lodge, the modern Lodge is too rough, they really do make a big effort to uh, smooth smooth down the uh, surface here. Okay, because, um, I mean, if you compare this to, like, say, an Asian-made, uh, you know, one of those cheaper skillets, this is a much smoother surface. It's been heating up, though, so I can't exactly touch the surface here. Um, I'm hoping uh, this, yeah, okay, we are live here on the Cast Iron Cooking Group, and I'm, and I, well, 
Again, I'm hoping if anybody uh, cares to uh, comment and say uh, pretty much what they like. However, um, oh yeah. Do it a question and answer first. Yes, that's yeah, that's th that's what I've been uh, doing the last few minutes. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> anyway, uh, just for the heck of it, as I said, I figured we'd do something with this plant pan that you normally don't do with a pie plate. But then again, that's because this is a cast iron pan. And as such, there's no reason to only use this for baking pies. Hence the butter. Help with seasoning. But more importantly, of course, it's for what I'm going to be cooking. I'm not sure if this is the first time you've, uh, and folks have seen uh, someone use a pie plate to cook hot dogs, but it's certainly not going to be the last. <laughs> Truth be told, I went out looking for bacon, and unfortunately they didn't have any at the uh, local store, so I had to settle for hot dogs. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> And anyway, if you have not cooked, used a cast iron skillet to cook hot dogs, you really need to do so very soon. Uh, once you have had um, hot dogs made in a cast iron pan, you will never, and I mean never, be satisfied with boiled hot dogs ever again. The difference is just so much more. Um, the nice thing about cooking hot dogs as well is that it's so easy to do. Um, you, it, I mean, the hot dogs really are pre-cooked, and all we really have to do is heat them up. Uh, first thing I did was I cut slits in the hot dogs so that uh, these things don't burst. Hmm. Hi. Uh, hello, uh, Rudy uh, and G Angelano. I hope it's pronouncing. What's what you're cooking? We are cooking some hot dogs. And making me hungry. Well, thank you. That's kind of like the idea. And as I said, um, here we're using a pie plate to uh, cook hot dogs. Yay for cast iron. Try doing this with a glass pie plate or one of those cheap aluminum pie plates. So, cooking hot dogs in a uh, cast iron skillet is really as easy as this. And that all you have to do is pretty much, um, you know, just uh, keep them going until uh, you've got a uh, nice uh, char on the outside. And they are done. And while we're at it, also uh, heat up the lo the other lodge skillet here. I mean, I admit this is like one of the easiest dish things to do in the world with a cast iron pan. You know, it's like nothing fancy. I mean, it's pretty much you're just heated right out of the out of the package. So, and of course, there's nothing wrong with that. If you if you're tired and you're com you come home from work, you're tired and you really don't want to do a lot of cooking. Well, why settle for a microwave frozen pizza when you can when it is really not much harder to just do this? sound in it itself is just so smoothing. I like the way these hot dogs start to dance too after uh, only a little bit. I'm guessing it's, you know, probably because of the way they're uh, starting to shrink a little bit just from uh, being cooked, but hey, it looks like we're already starting to uh, get some, um, br some browning on the outside. You don't want to uh, blast your uh, uh, your stovetop at uh, maximum heat when cooking hot dogs anyway. It's more like when you make pancakes or eggs because you don't want the outside to be burned in charcoal while the inside is still cold. That's not a, that's not a good hot dog. So I only have the uh, stovetop here set on uh, maybe uh, j on just below medium heat. Um, on a scale of one to ten, this would be like a uh, four, three to four. So it's really not that hot. And while we're at it, I guess I'll mention as well, you notice 
I'm using a wooden uh, spatula here to stir these around. I don't really have to. If I wanted to, I could use a metal spatula. There's absolutely nothing wrong with using metal utensils on cast iron. I'm just doing it uh, with wooden. I like uh, using wooden for a couple of reasons. One is, you know, the scraping sound of metal on metal. <laughs> um, the other is that, uh, well, no, you will not damage your cast iron pan with, me with uh, metal utensils. You could potentially scratch the seasoning, although that's although it's still difficult to do that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, as somebody pointed out there's the nostalgia of uh, reason to it as well. So, <clears throat> the wooden utensil—I mean, this spatula is really nothing special. I got this at Dollar General for like two dollars or so. It's one of the other things I like about cooking in cast iron. Here is that you, you can do pretty much everything on the cheap. And it comes out so wonderful nonetheless. You know, your whole family will be happy. You see how quickly these hot dogs are getting done? It's really pretty much as easy as that. You have to keep moving them around? Probably not. I think that's a nervous habit of mine more than anything else. In fact, if I, look, if I let them be, they will probably uh, get a better uh, crisp on each side. Although we will have to move them around eventually, you know, to brown the, all of the sides. Um, let me see. <clears throat> These comments here are moving down. I'm new. I'm new to cast iron. Maggie Hobson says, "What's the best thing to do to an older pan that things stick to?" Um, oh, I see. Meaning that uh, if you're trying to say keep your uh, cast iron non-stick, well, uh, anybody here, by the way, is yeah. Oh, good. People are already commenting on it. That's good. Somebody says re-season. Yeah, that's one way to do it. You know, you could re-season your pan. Uh, but the other thing I'm a big fan of with cast iron is low and slow. In that a lot of times things stick to your cast iron because it's simply too hot. Um, I know cast iron, of course, really you can do, you can really get it up to really scorching temperatures. But with some foods, you just don't want to. I mean, we don't want to uh, do our eggs to the point where they just turn into uh, you know, turn into charcoal or these hot dogs, for that matter. So it's better to just do a low and slow type of cook, and that as well helps to uh, keep these things from sticking. Because as you can see, these uh, we're certainly not getting any sticking at all. I just used a little butter. I mean, it's not they're not swimming in grease. But it's certainly enough that these um, hot dogs are going to be mm, quite good. Let's see. Why are you cooking so many? Well, so that we don't have to cook again for another day or so. There are two of us living here. Um, and besides, they're always friends we can, uh, we can give these things to. Best way, one for each of us. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I mean, really, I know if you have kids, they'd probably be tempted to snatch one of these right out of the pan. Well, don't do it, of course. They, you know, we don't want them to burn their fingers. But, yeah, it really is as easy as this. And I can only say again, if, and once you've had a hot dog cooked in butter like this, you know, yeah, it's a calorie bomb or a cholesterol bomb. <laughs> I'm not denying that. We don't cook hot dogs. We don't make hot dogs because they're healthy. We make them because they're delicious. And once you've had it like this, oh yes, it's delicious. As I said, forget the boiled hot dogs after this. And this hasn't taken very long either, has it? I mean, it's really no more than just a few minutes or so of rolling it around in the pan. I mean, this is literally, anyone can do this. I am an amateur cook. I am no chef, I am no professional, and yet I'm quite happy with how these are turning out. Hmm. Um, folks, again, as I said, this is kind of like a Q&A session, and again, feel free to ask any other questions uh, that, you, that you like, you know, about vintage, about modern, about Griswolds, about ugly hammered pans. Um, anybody here on the uh, group is free to uh, comment and help answer your questions. I will do what I can as well. Do you ever use a rid, um, this is Deborah uh, Thrapp. Do you ever use rigid, rigid cast iron for the hot dogs? Would you still use butter? Hmm. Oh yeah, a grill pan. Um, 
A grill pan would put some very nice marks on this as well, although I do like how these are turning out. I think these are just about done, in fact. Um, if you'd like to use a grill pan, you can certainly do so. I have to admit, I personally do not have a grill pan, only because I personally have just not found uh, it very uh, useful to, to use in my case. I like uh, hot dogs cooked on a flat surface like this. A lot of people love grill pans and of course feel free to use them in that case if that's what, if that's, uh, what you feel like. Um, and yes you will get some really great um, really get great grill marks on that. Yeah, would you still use butter on a grill pan? Mm, you could. I mean, you'd have to uh, move. You'd have to move it around so that you, um, so that you can get it on the ridges as well. Or maybe even butter the hot dogs in advance before you put them on the on the uh, in the pan. That's certainly possible. I would chime in. I would have to say to that question. Yes. It depends on what type of hot dog because you don't want the casing to stick. You know what I mean? So the ones that like don't really have the casing, like the uh, the the. Uh, Oscar Mayer, say for instance, mm -hmm. um, they, I think, would less they let off fat a lot quicker, so they wouldn't stick. Yeah. This is like the natural casing. Yeah. When you're putting natural casings on a really, really hot grill pan, the skin, the, the casing is going to stick without lubrication. You know what I mean? Without grease. Oh, that's certainly possible. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, by the, by the way, here's the thing. You know the great conspiracy they talk about? Why do they have 10 hot dogs in a package and only 8 uh, buns in the package? Well, if you noticed, they are, they're they mostly selling hot dogs in 8 packs these days. So these things actually match. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, thank you for doing this. I have to get to bed. Well, have a good evening, Denise. Um... Richard Calais, if I'm pronouncing that right, if you bake a pie in the pie dish, do you have to remove it to a different container after so as not to affect the flavor? Um, I found no. I cooked an apple pie in this, and of course apple is citrus and it is acidic, um, and I let it sit, you know, you have to let it rest for a long time, and I found it uh, was uh, just fine. Um, I'm not, um, also, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, more popular pies, like pecan pies, for instance, they're mostly sugar, um, not, not as acidic as, like, say, an apple or a blueberry pie. So my short answer to that would be, no, you probably do not need to do that. No, that's true. With the crust, you have to create the crust as that layer in between. It's not going to be. Oh, absolutely, yes. If somebody says the crust um, really also helps that to uh, protect the seasoning like that. And Rudy says as well, rigid cast iron. I love to cook asparagus in a rigid cast iron pan. Oh yeah, that, again, you get great grill marks from that. And of course. Oh, you don't? Okay. Okay, that's all right. That's okay. And, of course, other than that, that's the other thing is you got to toast the buns. At this point, I think these ones can come out here as well. Oh, yeah, these hot dogs are definitely well done. Oops, kind of broke open. Oh, well. Uh, so, no rust issue? No, I did not have a rust issue with when I cooked this apple pie. I did not find that there was a problem with that. Um, the, the citrus, again, the acid in the apples, yes, it did affect the seasoning. You know, as I said, the seasoning was looked kind of spotty. It did not look brand new because it had been affected by the apples. Um, <clears throat> which is one reason why I'm doing this, to help uh, reinforce the seasoning. I mean, I mean, you know what they like to say, oh, cook bacon. And the reason why is just that. It helps to uh, affect the se uh, in improve the seasoning on the pan. Uh, how do you not wash a greasy pan with soap and water? Well, there are a couple of reasons for that. Number one is that uh, you can use a nice stiff brush or a chainmail scrubber 
or the like and you can really scrape down your pan much more so than you could do with a non-stick pan or the like you're not going to affect the cast iron pan like that yes you might scratch the seasoning so you really kind of like have to get used to it um, the other thing of course is what about uh, germs and bacteria and here's the thing to consider is that after you're done washing it you put your pan on the stove and turn on the heat in order to dry it also we preheat these pans before we even cook with them meaning that we are getting these pans good and hot easily enough to kill any uh, bacteria on here so uh, these pans are effectively being sterilized by doing this you know we will kill any uh, nasties uh, by heating the pan after we wash and before we and before we uh, yeah, before we cook. Uh, all you have to do is heat it up to about 165 degrees and keep it at, at or above that temperature. And of course, you know, with a cast iron pan, anything can uh, get uh, a cast iron pan up to above 165 degrees. You can get two, three, four hundred degrees on the stove top with no difficulty at all. This thing came apart. Oh well, I told you I'm an amateur, folks. So uh, that's so. This is actually a clean pan. There is no uh, bacteria or other, uh, you know, or other critters on here. So that's that's one reason why. Uh, yes, you can use soap on a cast iron pan. Um, I myself feel that I don't have to. And Will Gray says I coat my pans in baking grease before I bake anything. Well, there's another example for you. Some uh, Jared Lee says, do you recommend reapplying oil and shortening after every use after washing it? I do, yes. Um, after these are done, I'm going to wash these. Well, I've got to let them cool off first, but I'm going to wash them in the sink uh, or just with uh, hot, you know, just with hot water, not with soap. And then after that, I'm going to um, put these back on the uh, stove top and dry them and then uh, when they, at that point, after they are dry, I'm going to turn off the heat, but then immediately uh, use a, a chamois I have here and uh, wipe down each pan and give it a, a very thin coating of, uh, of grease. Uh, really no more than just enough, you know, just so that you can see that it has a bit of a sheen. You know, you do not want to get it greasy and sticky. And then I just leave it there for like about 10 minutes or so and let and let it cool off. Um, partly I think that's because I actually have an electric stove top. Um, I, my good friend Jeff Rogers, the culinary fanatic, uh, he's a nice guy. Um, he has a method of uh, seasoning, of uh, washing his pans where he then puts them on the, uh, he does not, um, oil them afterwards instead he uh, puts them on the stove to, on his stove top with a with a gas burner that's probably the big difference and he just simply brings it up to when it's um, to the point where it's uh, smoking hot um, at that point then he says he uh, just lets it uh, cool off like that I'm not um, I'm not sure where that oh yeah that's right it's um, I think it's before he heats it up on the stove top that's when he applies his uh, oil, his uh, oil or his Crisco on that. And Maggie Hobson says, "I read so many different things about the best oil to season with. How do I determine <laughs> oil which is the best oil to season with? All of them. And I am maybe about seventy-five percent not joking. Pretty much." Any oil will help to season a cast iron pan and get you a uh, really good uh, non-stick uh, surface on there. Now, the two reasons for smoke, for uh, seasoning a pan. One is to protect against rust. That's probably number one, in fact. And number two is to get that um, uh, non-stick surface. Although, um, they talk about, oh, you know, they talk about uh, vegetable oil. They talk about lard, bacon grease they talk about flaxseed oil um, they all work 
And really, it's a matter of personal preference more than anything else. There are people who swear by flaxseed oil. It does the best for me, which is fine. You can go ahead and do so. There are people, of course, who just stick to a good old-fashioned lard. And uh, they will uh, just simply uh, do it that way. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. The whole point of the seasoning process is this. You are actually burning a layer of carbon onto the pan. So regardless of which oil you're using, you got to get your pan, you got to heat this up a little bit past the smoke point of the oil to the point where it smokes and um, then you get the, what's the fancy term uh, besides carbonizing? I know there's another term and I can't remember it. But essentially you're doing just that. You are burning a layer of carbon onto the pan. So it all breaks down and it all becomes a layer of carbon. Which is another reason why even if you have things like sensitivity to, I don't know, to pork or, or uh, other other kinds of chemicals or the like. When seasoning cast iron, it really doesn't matter because it all just breaks down anyway into carbon. So that's why I'm not concerned really at all. Um, the one I used for seasoning my pans, in fact, is, well, Crisby cast iron seasoning. You know, that's one of those uh, commercial ones that they put out a few years ago. I I've been using it and I enjoy it myself. For the record, no, they did not pay me for this plug. I'm saying that really because I'm a satisfied customer. Crispy is a combination of Crisco and beeswax. And I like seasoning my pans with that. The, uh, I don't use that for greasing my pans after I'm, do after I'm uh, done washing them. For that, I've got this little uh, thing here. I like to use Crisco to uh, grease my pans down after I wash them. And I guess here's a, here's a little thing about that. Uh, after you wash your pan, as I said, you give it a thin coating of oil, so very, very thin, um, just enough to really uh, be noticeable, and then you uh, heat it up and let it cool off. Um, as you know, when you use things like typical vegetable oil for greasing your pans every day, then it will, um, after a few days that of if you don't use it that often, after a few days that oil can become rancid and sticky and nobody likes that. What I found is that Crisco actually lasts a lot longer than that. Crisco is a, what's the term, a hydrogenated uh, vegetable oil. Or, so the, it, because it's been processed, that means this thing will stay fresh on your pan for, oh, I could say at least a couple of months or so. If you've got a large cast iron collection, like I do, <laughs> that's a matter of concern, and that's one reason why I like using Crisco to uh, grease my pans. Uh, I hope that helps. Um, <clears throat> let me see, what else? We've got Timothy Ewart who says, I got my bear last week. Now I season with bear oil. Works for me since the 1970s. Hey, well, good for you. Uh, as I said, to everybody, their, their own preferences. I mean, there's really no difference between that and, say, using lard, for instance, or beef tallow. Um, okay, we'll get a couple more of these uh, buns in here as well. And we've got ourselves some hot dogs. <laughs> I think we need... Just a wee bit more, just a tiny bit of oil in the pan. It might even be a bit dry. Give me one second. So I think I will throw in just a splash of olive oil, not much. Yeah, this is only just below um, medium heat on my stove top. It's hot enough to make the olive oil smoke, but then again, olive oil is a low smoke point oil anyway, which I guess is one reason you probably don't want to season your cast iron with olive oil for that reason. It's a low smoke point, and so it's, um, it's not real. you know, I'm thinking it probably won't do uh, that great a job seasoning the pan. 
But even though I'm an admin on this group, I do not consider myself an expert or a professional. Uh, and which is why, again, I encourage everybody, please, to, uh, you know, please chip in and comment and, uh, give, and give us answers of what you do. That's one reason why I love the Cast Iron Cooking Group so much, because it's not just any one person. We've got thousands of people all contributing, all giving advice, all showing off their cooking. And that's really the best part about this group, and that's what makes it a lot of fun for me. Um, in that there's so many things you can look on it just about any time of the day There's always something new somebody showing off something great And the other thing I like about it is that it's all is that the vast majority of it all is just everyday family cooking You know, we're cooking our meals breakfast lunch supper We're cooking maybe for our kids or for our family or for I don't know uh, church gathering or something and it all looks great i mean i'm there have there are some chefs on the uh on the uh group most of them are lurking it seems like whenever a chef shows up he doesn't last long on the group that's because usually he's just out to promote himself more than actually take part in the group and because of this he ends up leaving on his own most of the time um there is some drama on the group, but we do our best to keep that under control. However, what's what I like, as I said, the most about the group is, is that it's just everyday folks. I am no different than uh, the thousands of other people on the group, and I enjoy it. I have learned a lot. This group has really been an education for me in that I've only been cooking for about the past 10 years or so. Uh, some folks have been cooking all their lives. I have not. And much of my education has come from the cast iron cooking group, and there is so much I have yet to learn. Like, for instance, how to properly toast these buns, for one. <laughs> and not bad. So far, we've been going about half an hour or so. Uh, let me see. At this point, I guess we can prepare some hot dogs if we want to keep going. I could probably break out a couple of eggs. Yeah, because that's the other thing that people uh, are always doing with cast iron, the egg test. <laughs> Love this group. Well, thank you very much, Linda. It's you, you personally, and everybody else are the ones who make this group so much fun. some nice toasted hot dogs here. Really can't do much better than that. Of course, on the other hand, it's also very, very easy to uh, you know, upset folks because apparently cooking is very personal and that's one reason why the uh, admins of the group do our best to be so vigilant. And here's an example of, of why I say that. Give me one quick second here. Because on these hot dogs, I'm doing some good old mustard and ketchup. And of course, some people will say, I never put ketchup on my hot dogs. That's so awful. Well, you don't have to. You are not the one eating these hot dogs. I am. And that's what I can say about a lot of the stuff being cooked on the group as well. In that people show off what they want and we have a rule on the uh, group that we do our best to enforce and that rule is quite simply if it's if it's cooked in cast iron it is welcome on the cast iron cooking group. We don't care if you're making hot dogs with ketchup we don't care if you're making uh, some uh, really healthy and, and nice vegan uh, recipes. If they're cooked in cast iron, please show them to us. And we will keep any uh, bad negative comments to a minimum. For example, on the group, you could take, say, you could take some pork belly and you could wrap it in bacon. And then you can deep fry all of that in lard. <laughs> 
and if you as long as you deep fry it in cast iron you this is all welcome on the cast iron cooking group people if don't have to like it if that's what you want to do then you can go ahead and do it essentially the rule is if you don't like it just don't comment on it you don't have to look at it you can just move on there's always something else uh, on the group and in fact i think i'm gonna have one of these hot dogs right now huh. hmm. Mm. Hmm. And Bob Hinton says, what is this ketchup you speak of? Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, Deborah says, do you use the same cast iron on the fire in the kitchen or keep them separate? Um, I am mostly an indoor cook. I live in a city and I live in an apartment building and we really um, don't have much opportunity to do outdoor cooking. Um, the few times I've done so, I have used the same cast iron. There are, of course, people who um, actually have their own uh, cast iron just for outdoor cooking, which is great. Mm. <laughs> which is why, among other things, we know, we know all too well about the dreaded disease, cast ironitis, which, if you've been on the group long enough, you know what that is, and you're... Uh, Essentially, it's the desire to uh, collect and hoard as much cast iron as possible, <laughs> which can cause trouble, yes. But um, I, I think the best way to describe cast iron, or cast ironitis rather, would be to explain some of the symptoms. Like, for instance, if you have yourself a collection of kitchen cast iron and a collection of camping cast iron, and never will the two be mixed together, you might have cast ironitis. If a lot of your recipes include the part to, uh, to uh, blow smoke away from the smoke detector, you might have cast ironitis. If your idea of a 12-step program is taking 12 steps to move past all of the uh, cast iron in your home, you might have cast ironitis. If one of your greatest fears is that uh, you're going to is that you die and your wife sells your cast iron for what you told her you paid for it, you might have cast ironitis. You get the idea. <laughs> Things like, uh, if your cast iron collection weighs more than your children, you might have cast ironitis. And, oh yeah, there's a whole list of these in the file section on the group, and we do indeed give credit to, to uh, Jeff Foxworthy for inspiring that. <laughs> And some and Brandon Jacobs says, I just ordered a lodge pie pan. Thank you for showing yours. Well, thank you. <laughs> lodge is not paying me to do this. I paid for this. They did not send this to me as a promotional gift in any way. I paid it because I'm again I'm a satisfied customer of Lodge Cast Iron. I love Lodge Cast Iron. I think it's great stuff. I enjoyed making this pie with it. I'll make many more pies with it. I mean, the holidays are coming, and you go, and I have no doubt whatsoever you will enjoy that pie that pie pan as well. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right. Well, since we still have about twenty minutes to go, I better quickly pull something else out of the hat. Give me one second. And I guess that means, we, again, we should do the old egg test and make a couple of eggs because we got ourselves here a so-called rough modern lodge and we've got a nice glass smooth vintage lodge. So this might make an interesting test, don't you think? Hmm. Uh, once again, anybody feels free to comment, feel free to do so. Anyway, 
I'm making eggs, I better break out a little bit more butter. And let's see what happens here. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm doing this pretty much on, on the fly. I did not plan on doing this in advance, but yeah, it seems like a, a figured why not. Let's do this and see what happens. That's pretty much why I did this uh, get this Facebook Live here on only an hour's notice. I mean, I thought, hey, let's do it and let's uh, have a little fun. I hope some folks enjoy this. All right, where did that fork go? All right, we'll pull this one out. And I suppose if we are, if we wanted to do um, non-stick cooking, we should probably start with the vintage because this is supposed to be very non-stick. It is a glass smooth lodge from the 1940s. If you've uh, caught the beginning of this video, you'll see this is a uh, three-notch lodge from the 40s. And in fact, since we're making eggs, I should probably switch to a different spatula. You can hear that. That's the sound of metal on a very smooth cast iron surface. Now let's see what we have here. Might have had, might have the heat up a little bit much. In fact, I could see that it's maybe cooking faster than I wanted it to. Anyway, there's really nothing to it as far as uh, cooking in ca cooking eggs in cast iron. I know people like to say their eggs are always sticking. Well, as you can see, I don't think we're going to have any problem at all with that. I have turned down the heat a little bit on this because I don't want these eggs to burn so quickly. But nonetheless, we're not having any trouble at all with sticking here. As you can see. I ruined the yolk on that, but that's okay. I like the yolks broke. Hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping that the, yeah. Um, anyway, as I said, I mean, please uh, feel free to uh, put in your own comments on this. Um, I can only say once again, you know, this is, um, this is doing pretty good. I'm not having any difficulty at all with this. And cooking this egg is not taking long at all. Soon enough, I'll be able to uh, simply uh, slide it out onto the plate. And I have no doubt it will slide out. Then I guess we get to uh, have fun with the more modern lodge and see how that one turns out. <laughs> mm. Hot dogs and eggs. I guess we're having um, breakfast for supper here. <laughs> anyway, I'm definitely not seeing any sticking on this. Are you? Just spread this out a little bit more. Get ourselves a nice plate. Come on. And voila. That wasn't so hard. 
But then again, of course, this is a vintage glass smooth cast iron pan. I guess it's expected to be like that. But the real key is again that we simply did this low and slow. And now that we've done that, now comes the real fun part. I think this is the part folks want to see. Well, now we get to see what happens when we cook eggs in a modern lodge cast iron pan. Pie pan. <laughs> But hey, it is a skillet. It's only shaped slightly different. Not even going to use all of this butter. Try not to use all this butter. And this is the sound of metal on a not so smooth cast iron surface. I think I got some of the butter on the handle, in fact. Oh well. Once again, I've had this only maybe a little between three and four uh, for the stove top heat. I do not have this as blasting heat. And now, one, and two. If anyone might, wants to make any Gordon Ramsay comments, please feel free to do so. Those eggs are so raw, the rooster is probably still boinking the hen. Here, oh, we, oh, I'm, I'm missing so many comments on this. <laughs> Lynn Patton Sutherland, I was given my mom's Wagner cast iron and nothing sticks. They are beautiful, wonderful. Just ate and I'm hungry now. Can you flip without the spatula? I am not that good. <laughs> and I, I can say that even now. Somebody else says, eggs always seem to stick in new cast iron until it's got a good base of seasoning built up. That's Brandon Jacobs. Well, again, with this pan here, so far I have cooked a pie. I've cooked a few hot dogs. So I'm not sure if you consider this to be brand new or not, but, hmm, look at this. I don't know about you, but I'm not seeing any sticking. As I said, I missed some of the comments, and I apologize for that. Great on scrambled eggs. I'm going to, Bob Hinton, I'm going to try that. Ooh, chili sauce on eggs. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Ketchup on eggs? Maybe scrambled. I always use butter for eggs. Better, better taste. Lynn Patton Sutherland. I was told no metal on cast iron. That, that I can honestly say you can use metal on cast iron. You will not damage cast iron by doing this. If you do, then it's a bad pan. <laughs> the worst that could happen is the seasoning may be scratched. In which case then, well, gee, you'll just have to cook some more and build up more seasoning on it. Um, the real problem with the using metal is the sound, is that you get the, uh, you know, you get that scraping. Which is one reason why I do like using uh, wooden utensils on cast iron, but that's really about the only reason. And also, especially when making eggs, a wooden utensil is not thin enough to be able to flip an egg, for instance. So that's why you have to use a metal spatula for that. Gee, nothing stuck. How about that? I'm showing off the nonstick test. Yeah, I guess so. You're making a, you're making a feast? Uh, yeah, I know. It's like, I'm, who's going to eat all of this? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> that's a good question. Well, I'm sure I can find somebody to give it to. Yeah, that's a, that I guess we'll have to. So, 
I was, and Andrea Fuller says, I was told the key is to heat the pan before you add oil or food. Is this true? I am a strong believer in that, yes. That is, as they say, an ancient Chinese secret. The uh, saying is, hot wok, cold oil, food won't stick. Um, there were a couple of, uh, of the earlier uh, celebrity chefs who, uh, who espoused that as well, and I'm a strong believer in that as well. I like to heat up the pan first, add my oil for maybe about a minute or so, just to get the oil hot enough, and then add the food. And uh, somebody else, Lynn Patton Sutherland, also, low and slow is the way to go. Oh yes, I'm also a big believer in that. Um, as I said earlier, yes, you can get uh, cast iron up to blasting hot temperatures. And for things like steaks, for instance, it's great. Or pizza, even. But for things like eggs, you don't want to do blasting hot. You only I only have this uh, heated maybe about 3 to 4 on the stovetop. 3 to 4 out of 10, for instance. And, of course, with everybody else, with everybody, it, it really varies from uh, one to the other. It's really uh, more to do with your stove than anything else. Your cooking style. Your cooking style, yes. I am more of a short order cook. Oh, yes you are. I cook fast. Yes you do. I'm more of a slow cook. Yeah, I cook fast. And here we are at this point. I'd say these... With the eggs, I've tried. I can't... I'm not successful at eggs. Because I cook fast. So with the eggs, I would have to cook fast. Come on. Hmm. Okay, looks like I'll have to nudge the, this a little bit. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, like it's like there you go. Damn, this is hot though. Oh, almost burned my hand. <laughs> That's all right. I'll just do it this way. Ooh, look at that. It's now it's sliding off. There we go. Voila. We've got some eggs cooked in a modern-day, so-called rough, cast, large cast iron pan. These eggs, as you can see, no trouble at all. Real. So again, as you said, low and slow is the way to go. And now, because of this, we've got some uh, nice eggs that we're going to have to eat. Or I'll eat or something. <laughs> And let's see what else we have here. So low and slow. Huh? Yes. All right. Andrea Feller, low and slow is my dad's expert tip on cooking meat. Well, depending on the meat, for instance. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and what you're doing. I mean, for instance, again, for steaks, you really want to get yourself a good steer on a uh, sear, not steer, a good yeah. sear on it. <laughs> mm. Um, let me see. Need a smaller spatula. Melissa Martinez. Well, that one worked okay. It's definitely, again, it's really uh, what you what you have. Um, uh, Bob Hinton. Since you seem to have cast iron fever, is there a cast iron pan with a slight wall slope? I see most have steep walls, making it harder to slide food like eggs out onto a plate. Um, well, there actually are cast iron chef skillets. Also, the, here's one disadvantage that the vintage pans had. I mean, these were made mostly for like cooking in wooden stoves. And because of this, it's like you had the heat underneath and it was meant to uh, radiate up above to heat the food. So because of this, they did have a more steep angle to it. Um, Though, as I said, even then they did have, and they still do have, cast iron chef skillets. And I do have, actually I got the Lodge Blacklock skillet just last year, especially for use as a chef skillet. Of course, as you can see, this one here, this cast iron pie pan, that didn't do too badly making those eggs now, did it? So, I mean, there's no reason why you couldn't get the pie pan and use that. Um... The regular Lodge skillets, they work fine. Lodge does produce at least a couple of different kinds of uh, cast iron chef skillets as well. And in addition, of course, you could even just get yourself a griddle. Make the eggs in that and then just slide them right off of the, uh, the, the griddle, one of those rounder griddles. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, Bethany France, okay, where are you from? I'm from Taunton, and I recognize your accent. Yes, that's true. I am a uh, born and bred New Englander, and I've said that many times. <laughs> so, 
Um, you know, of course, you know what they say about accents, you know, it's like, no, we don't have accents, it's the rest of the world that does. And Rick Hankins, he is right. Oh, Rick Hankins is here? Okay. Um, low and slow. Okay, Andrea Feller. All right. Actually, at this point, I think we are getting to be done. I think we've done just about what we wanted to do. I mean, you figure, as, as I said, it's been almost an hour. I made us some hot dogs. And then, uh, just for the heck of it, we cooked up some eggs. The eggs came out quite nice, if I may say so. Um, so, yeah. I'm quite happy with how, with how these turned out. Uh, I've already turned off the stove top. The cast iron is cooling off. So I think I might actually anger, get some people mad and put some ketchup on my eggs. <laughs> but I'm not drowning it. So anyway, having said all that, I hope you've enjoyed watching this, folks. I mean, um, again, I just uh, felt just for the heck of it. I thought I'd had some fun playing around with my new Lodge uh, pie plate and uh, just see what would happen when we uh, did some cast iron cooking here. Because, again, I really love this group. I'm so glad this group has been so successful. I'm very, very flattered that it's been so successful. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Oh yeah, these eggs turned out very well. Maybe a little pepper. And other than that though, how do you clean um, with my hands? <laughs> no, seriously, once these are cooled off, I'm just going to wash them in the sink under rinse, uh, rinse them mostly under hot water and use my chainmail scrubber. Then I'm going to put them back on the uh, stove top, give them a, a very light coating of um, Crisco and uh, let them and let them heat, dry heat, um, dry over a uh, low heat for about 10 minutes or so. And that's really all that needs to be done. <laughs> I just joined the video. Well, um, you can always watch it uh, once it's done because, you know, um, it'll still be here on the group and you can uh, watch it from the beginning. I want to go cook some quesadillas now. I'll we'll go and have some fun. <laughs> and yeah, I'd say at this point, I think it's really... I think that about covers it for now. So I can only hope again that I hope you didn't mind. Well, yeah, I hope you weren't too bored, folks. I enjoyed this. This, again, was a vintage lodge and a uh, modern-day lodge. Um, I mean, if we do this again, there's so many other things we could talk about. You know, Griswold, Birmingham Stove and Range, and who knows what else. And I'd say, well, we'll see if we can do this again some soon. Um, other than that, though, thank you very much to everyone who showed up. Uh, again, I've enjoyed it, and it's really it's you folks here who make the Cast Iron Cooking Group so much fun. So uh, thank you once again, everybody. I'll see you later. Have a good evening. <laughs>